Good morning, morning, millennials. millennials. Welcome back to the morning toast and happy Friday, Friday. Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. Everybody's Everybody's looking forward forward to to the weekend. weekend. Happy Friday, everyone. Congratulations. You did it. You made it to the end of the week. Nobody else but you. Congratulations. You earned this. I'm looking forward to the Bruno. I don't know about you. I'm looking forward to the Bruno, Bruno as well. How's your Friday going so far? It's going well. I had a nightmare that um, we did the podcast and I forgot to press record. That which is nightmarish. So let's all just check that we are yes, recording. Yes, camera on, podcast We're on. Looking I'm good. good. I'm good. Yeah. We always have our backup recording running. Right. That would be, you know, for a rainy day and it would be very shitty, but you would have something. Mm-hmm. But I like to imagine that, like, if I didn't have that dream, something, like, might go wrong today. You know what I mean? Like, I was warned You're properly. You're preparing us. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for the preparation. Tell me um, you take your job too seriously without telling me you take your job too seriously. You're I had just, a dream. That's the thing about being a mogul. Like, everyone thinks it's so glamorous, but, like, you are right. kept up at night worrying about it's your true. empire. So fucking Sorry. true, bitch. Your fempire. No, it's an empire. <laughs> Just no. because it belongs to a woman doesn't make it a fempire. <laughs> Femperial from Dynasty. That plot line was a low point in the show. That plot line was a low point in my life. <laughs> 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 um Well, it's Friday, which is just like an absolute delight to be able to say that. I caught up on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I'm still one episode behind, but my God, what an infuriating fucking show. I'm actually glad I haven't been watching it week to week because I don't think my mental health could possibly stand it. Wow, that's such a coinky dink because I caught an episode of Southern Charm last night. Oh, it good. was so an episode from about five weeks ago that, um, you know, was the first of many that I've missed. But I turned my TV on. I'm reintroducing myself to television and I missed the gang. It wasn't a particularly good episode, yet I enjoyed. Yeah, I mean, real, watching Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is never going to be like a bad experience because it's just glamorous, beautiful, rich women, which is really wonderful. Mm-hmm. But um, the episode that I watched, which was, I think, the second to last episode. So I still have one to catch up on. You know, Rinna is launching a rosé. Oh, I didn't know. Rinna rosé. And you know what? I'm getting like a feeling, kind of how I felt last season about Dorit, just like not being able to keep up with this group of women. Um, I'm feeling that way about Lisa Rinna. It's just like, it's very lowbrow, everything she kind of does, like Rinna Beauty and Rinna Rosé, and it's not like elevated. Yeah, it's like the sort of stuff they do on OC. OC, And so she had this wine tasting and it was like, she was like, everyone has COVID. So Harry and I had to set it up ourselves. So it was like all really like janky. Um, And she acted like such an animal. And it was so out of character for her because she literally went to lunch with Sutton and like they buried the hatchet completely over still the Elton John thing. And we haven't spoken about the Elton John thing in weeks. And then she gets to her house and she literally tells Sutton to get the fuck out of her house. She was trying so hard to ensure that her Rinna Rosé event makes it to air. Because the women have events all the time. True. Some of them don't make it because nothing happens. Or it's just like not consequential to the storyline. She made damn sure that her Rosé line was going to get on air. It was so obvious. And and like then in the previews for next week, she like backtracks, obviously. Like it... And then she like she has like a breakdown. She's like, I'm not doing well. Like it's all very, in my opinion, calculated. That's so interesting and definitely right on the money. Because Jackie, I've and it's never pretty, seen it's her. Smart even strat- when it, it's a yeah. smart strategy. Even when she was in her crazy villain era, like back in the day, she never acted like she just acted. It was fucking crazy. And she was saying like she was drunk. Like she doesn't really do that. It was so weird. Yeah. No, there's typically a rhyme or a reason. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And I think Rinna Rosé is, you know, going to do the most. Okay. And have how did the launch go for her? Well, no one was able to come because Omicron, Moronicron, I forget what it's called, is running rampant through the group. So at first, Garcelle has it. And uh, then another wave comes and Crystal gets it. So half of the women weren't even there. That's so crazy because last season, they got COVID also. Yeah, and so I guess this is January right after the holidays when Omicron, that's when I had it. Yeah. So it's like half the women haven't been at half of the shit. Damn. Okay, sounds like I'm missing nothing. I'm feeling really good about that. You're missing nothing. Um, I still have one more episode, so everything I've just said 
is without the context of the most recent episode. So please keep that in mind if you disagree with my takes. Okay, cool. And I will keep watching Southern Charm and eventually be caught up and be able to share my thoughts. Speaking of Southern Charm, did you know that Shep and Taylor have broken up? I did know that. And then um, Olivia did an interview this week where she said that she thought the breakup's not permanent. But Mm -hmm. they have to break up if there's ever going, like either they have to break up because she wants things that he doesn't want. And if she has any shot in hell of getting him to want those things too because he wants her badly enough, she has to put her foot down. So this is part of the natural process for the two of them. Yeah, for sure. I wasn't like surprised by their breakup and I did see people like guessing whether they had broken up based on social media posts, but I didn't see like an official announcement of a breakup. That's why I was surprised. But she was on Watch What Happens Live this week and... Andy asked um, her if there's anyone in the Bravo universe that he can set her up with now that she's single. And she said Tom Schwartz, who's also single. Is that I'm crazy? Obsessed. I know. I'm obsessed. What a great answer. A really good answer. And I don't know her that well yet, but from what I know of her, I think they would be really compatible. No, I know. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. And he asked Naomi too, and she was like, no. <laughs> Love that for her, too. She said she's dating, like, someone. Oh, great. I absolutely love that. Yeah, so um, I'm working my way back to getting caught up. Southern Charm is not a priority for me. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills comes first. And so does Only Murders in the Motherfucking Building Season 2. I love that show so much. I don't know why I can't get my ass to start the second season. I also did not want to watch until there was, like, enough episodes for me to binge at a time. Mm -hmm. Because I don't do week to week when it comes to scripted shows. I just refuse to be forced to change my habits and now there's like a good amount of episodes I think it might have even be, been over yeah I need to watch I need to watch too Zach has been watching in the living room so I just like run through maybe we'll start together next week and we could recap it together oh yeah that reminds me um I know you have a child but like I call you and you don't answer so I have to tell you things on the podcast if I want to just let you know information about my life when did you try and call me that I didn't answer I always try and call you back yesterday like early afternoon Interessant. I don't recall. I literally texted you and I also wrote down the things I had to tell you in the text message so that I didn't forget. I don't even know what you're talking about. Let me go look through my phone. Whatever. The other thing I wanted to tell you is I'm obviously coming to stay with you next week. Mm -hmm. Um, But for like my schedule and then the flights, I have to come on Monday instead of Sunday. Okay. There's nothing in my text messages about this. Uh, Nary a thing. Nothing. Ready? Mm hmm. Ready. I just. All you were asking more me for was send me a video. To make a TikTok. Yeah. She's not a Christian. Um, here, call me for two things. And then in parentheses, I wrote the two things at 1.03 p.m. Bitch. Claudia? Claudia, I do not have these text messages. I promise you. It goes from Liar. talking about... Um, I'll send you a screenshot right now. It goes here. from talking... Okay, send me a screenshot because it goes from talking about like the posting of the episode in Ethernet mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And then you send me an Ethernet cord. You send me a funny comment not yet I had Claudia I do not have these texts email okay I'm gonna send you what I have hold on this is so crazy they're trying to keep us apart they're she deleted them Claudia Claudia whatever well now is the opportunity um to tell you all the things I've been wanting to tell you since you didn't call me back yesterday the first is that um I'm staying with you obviously next week um but my flight is on Monday so Monday's episode I won't be with you I just wanted to tell the toasters that and you that Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday next week Jackson Claude in Florida Monday regular this or maybe podcast only because my flight's in the morning so we'll have to decide okay or maybe we could film Sunday night we'll just have to figure that out okay um So that was like a housekeeping update and also literally just letting you know like I'm not arriving to your house until Monday. Great. Can't wait to see you whenever I do. But we should watch Only Murders together and then we can recap it next week. Oh my God. So cute and cozy. We could cuddle in my bed. You think Ben and Zach would be fine sleeping together? Yeah. So me, you, and Rold. Now that you have a king bed in my room, um, me, you, and Rold could totally fit. Oh, for sure. He would love that. He loves sleeping in bed. That's his favorite. (laughs) I also saw somebody suggest a good Patreon idea because when we're together, we should film some Patreon content. Um, One, you need to make like a vlog trying different homemade baby food recipes. Okay. And then in the next vlog, I need to try them. Oh, that's so funny. Also, someone suggested that we do a vlog of us reacting to old toast clips. Since there are so many going around the internet, we could just like pull up that talk. Yeah, we could. We could. It's always just hard to organize that logistically, like to watch on the screen and then for us to watch. Yeah. 
yeah to all watch together so i liked that idea but it's just yeah, gonna like be like too. me being sad about like my old face my old physique my old hair I'm, we've all been there you know so of course oh my god the craziest thing happened to me last night so Ben's best friend was his birthday party last night. And like, I was so RDH that I couldn't go, but like I had to be like a good comedian and I had to stay back and study. And I also like, I couldn't even drink because I can't drink before a show. So I have a show tonight for those who don't know. Um, so I'm laying in bed. I've been like rewatching my MSG show, writing down new jokes, coming up with new stuff. Like so much time has passed. Like some jokes don't feel relevant anymore, you know? Interesting. Yeah. Like the squid games. I don't even like that's like so that old, joke. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember that joke though. So it can go. So it obviously wasn't memorable. No, but I didn't um, watch Squid Games, so it wouldn't have right. stuck with me. So it's 11 o'clock and my doorbell rings, which is really uncommon. And I'm like, who is it? And the person says, Jonathan. Now, I know Jonathan from my building, but I was a little suspicious. I'm like, wait, who is it? And he was like, it's Jonathan. I'm like, oh, it is Jonathan. Okay. And I open the door and Jonathan is standing outside my door with 15 boxes of pizza. Now, I was immediately, like, shook because I thought someone was playing a prank on me. When I was in high school, this is actually a crazy story. When I was in high school, I was a senior. There was a prank being done onto our school, and it was, like, a mystery who the prank. Every couple of days, like, a huge order of pizza would arrive at the front desk, like, reception of the school, um, and nobody would know where it came from. It wasn't paid for. It was, like, a delivery, and it was always from different restaurants, and the administration of the school like did everything in their power to try and figure out like who was placing these orders and it was particularly nefarious one because like you're like scamming a local business out of money because they were always ordering from non-kosher pizza restaurants and literally you're we're not allowed to bring non-kosher food into our school it was a kosher building um so it was like this huge predicament and it was this huge mystery who did it and literally we never found out who did it Maybe now you putting this, I don't really remember this. Maybe I had graduated, but maybe now that you're sharing. You had graduated. I was a senior. It was like boys in my grade. Oh, okay. Maybe someone will come forward now. Perhaps. It was so, like, I remember thinking it was not funny and, like, not cool of anyone. Like, wasting the restaurant's time and resources. The delivery person's time and resources. It's a waste taking of food. non-kosher food into a sacred building. It's a waste of food. I do believe that's what the school ended up doing. Like, paying for it and then bringing it to, like, a, a shelter or something. Um, and that's what I thought was happening to me last night. Because I just had, like, a media flashback, flashback of, like, an unexpected delivery of a huge order of pizza. It turns out that Ben Ben's party trick is running to the bathroom, ordering pizza on his phone for the party. And then like 10 minutes later, it arrives and everyone's like, oh my God, who ordered pizza? And when they find out it's Ben, it's like, everyone's like, Ben, Ben, Ben. Like that's his favorite thing that's to do. That's actually a really good party trick. I'm never not grateful for yeah. the pizza when it arrives. Like, cause I'm like, really Ben, you're going to do it again. And then he does it. I'm like, you know what? Still slaps. It's still every works. time. So I was like, after I thought it was a prank, I knew immediately that Ben did his party trick and he chose the wrong address. He just had it sent to like his seamless go-to address, which is mine. And I would have like couriered it over or like put it in an Uber and sent it down. But Ben was so far, like we were on opposite sides of the city. Like it wouldn't have made any sense. So I ended up just like, there's a lot of guys who work in my building. So it's in the break room. And this morning they were like, oh my, pizza for breakfast, pizza for lunch, pizza for dinner. Um, it was so much pizza. I'm like, you guys aren't going to be eating pizza till the end of the year. Yeah. That's so cute. It was cute. so, I did obviously grab a slice. I was going to ask. And was it good pizza? It was Joe's Pizza, which is arguably the best pizza in the city. Wow. Your cup runneth over. So like, I was any? like, Jonathan, no. I was like, Jonathan, take it down, but just like open the top box and let me get a slice first. Damn. How's Theo doing? Thank you. Thank you so much for asking. He's doing well. He's doing better. He's taking to his antibiotics, but um, he's also on an anti-itching pill. And it's not working as fast as I need it to work because every time I take the cone off, he immediately goes to lick his foot. So I have to put the cone back on. I want to help him, but I can't. Oh, Theo, we're thinking of you. Thoughts and prayers, Tiggs. Thoughts and prayers. Let's just all say a silent prayer for Theo. For Theo's itchy foot. Theo. Theo, Theo, Theo. 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 Let me be your Theo. Let me be your Theo. That was really beautiful. I hope we're Bryce. I hope we're able to sync up. Bryce is great. He's right here. You can't see him, but the YouTubers can. And he's just being an angel. He's so excited, but a little nervous because Magnolia is coming to stay with us. And Theo, so he has like a full house full of like his best friend, arch nemesis, and his lady love. And 
he's taking his job as host really seriously. Not me totally forgetting that Margo's also staying at your house. Like, I don't know why I thought it was just going to be like me, you, and Roald and Zach. Well, for a few days it will be. And then the Snatchler's coming. Oh, that's why. Right. Because she has to work. So she can't She's, come the whole time. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be a full house full of pups. And I'm literally so fucking excited. Well, three pups in one house. That's exciting. It's the dream for these boys. Did you get your toad situation like fully no, flushed out? No, and it won't be fully flushed out. So it will be an indoor weekend for the boys. I'm sorry. I did the okay. best I could. That's okay. That's okay. I know these things take time. Yeah, next time it'll be safe and sound out there. Um, so now we're what? Two weeks, maybe three weeks, you living in Florida. How's the homeowner life? It's never ending. Yeah. It's never ending. There are so many different facets, like the inside, the outside, the furniture, Landscaping. the land, the, the perimeter, like the guts, like the gutters, the intestines of the house. It's fucking crazy. Um, I'm so excited for when we're settled and like all of this is it's done. done. Um, mm -hmm. And it makes you just like want to rip the bandaid off and do everything. But then there's so much going on. It's like, whoa, whoa, let's do one thing at a time. And then it's like, how come nothing's getting done? No. <laughs> <laughs> also, like I do feel like a good rule of thumb is like not to do everything at once. Like financially, it doesn't make the most sense. Mental health wise, it does not make the most sense to like keep having construction. Like not everything has to be done. It just has to be livable. Yeah, no, and it's definitely livable. And I think like by next week, like it will be a lot more quiet around here. I'm really excited about that. And then I do need to focus on like furniture. I've gotten so much stuff already. Like I've also came with all my New York stuff, but I have mm -hmm. more space than I've ever had in my life um so I just keep needing things you know like I need a duvet insert like there's just mm. always something that I need I need bath mats for my bathroom like and these are just small things I also need a million other things so it's just never ending but it's it's a fun project but it's overwhelming yeah no for sure homes are literally money pits like they just require so much upkeep they really really do especially when you just move in and there's just so many like little things that I want to do. And now, you know, I'm obsessed with wallpaper. I'm, I'm addicted. You know, I need mm -hmm. rugs. I just, I'm actually getting some Jill Zarin rugs. I'm so excited. I'm telling you, Jill Zarin rugs are, are legit. And I'm not just saying that. Like I have I've had really some really great ones time. coming indoor and outdoor. I'm actually getting the rug that we have in our studio because it's a great rug. Hopefully I can keep it cleaner than we did over there. Um, but also some like patio rugs. I'm really excited. This rug you're getting? Yeah, for, for your room. Are you sure that it's not a Jill Zarin? I thought you said it was. It used to be, but we like took a dump on that one. <laughs> okay, so whichever, like the shaggy salt colored rug. Okay, good. Because I was like, this rug is like disgusting. Even before it was made gross by us, it's like the ugliest rug. I'm like, get that shit out of my room, bitch. Okay, the classic cream Jill Zarin rug I'm getting for your bedroom. Oh, good, good. Her, her rugs are good. Yeah. So it's just a million things whilst also, you know, being... A working mom. A mogul. Pumping, nursing, slowing down, but still doing all of that. It's just a million things. I still need to like, and then and then it's like phase two of like, okay, once I'm a little more settled, I can take my driving classes. Right. But it's just never. Are you going to do like group driving class or like a solo I think I'm more of like class. a private driving, driver's ed sort You of are, but like I could see literally the sitcom that is you and the people in your dri adult driving class. I would only do it if they let me vlog them. A hundred percent. It would be an actual sitcom. I should bring a camera crew with me. I feel like everyone has like a, a hilarious or traumatic driver's ed story. Like mine was after school and it was, we used to always get like food after school. We'd always go to Serafina and get pasta and then we'd get in the car. Me, my friend Rachel, my friend Alicia and this boy Ruben from our class and we were such terrible drivers and we were like bellies full of penne a la vodka in the back seat. Stop, start, stop, start. It was a miserable experience. I actually found out recently that my driver's ed teacher, who like was an icon living legend, passed away. That's so sad. So sad. Yeah, no, I'm not looking. I hope I do private lessons. Um, I would do group if that's, you know, the most expeditious way to get it done. But I feel like I'm always in situations like this where it's like I'm in a room full of strangers like doing weird things, you know? No, of course. And by the way, the worst part, like group is sounds funny in theory, but then your ass has to sit and watch other morons drive. Oh, goodness gracious. No, thank you. No, thank you. And then we'll like be playing icebreakers in the car. Like I, Oof. I, I don't have time. So my name is Jackie. I'm originally from New York and my favorite pizza topping is cheese. <laughs> yeah. 
It's like the worst icebreaker, by the way. Like, what's your favorite pizza topping? Never played that. I've never gotten. Oh, it's a classic. I've never sung so low. It's a classic. <laughs> Um, okay, it's Friday. We have a great show. I'm ready to dive in um, off the deep end, you know? I'm ready to dive in as well to the Fast Five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. And today's episode is brought to you by Osea. Dewy summer skin isn't just for your face. With the right products, you can get a full body glow. Osea skincare and body care products help get your skin ready for every summer look. So you can experience radiant summer skin with Osea's Andaria Algae, Algae Body Oil. So it keeps your skin soft and glowing with the Andaria Algae, which has acai pulp, babasu seed oil, which is a rich and never greasy luxurious body oil that's fragrant with sunny citrus and notes of sweet passion fruit. Like the glazed donut look is totally in and it's not just for your face, whether you're showing leg at a wedding or a cocktail party or you're out, I don't know, sexy collarbone moment. Make sure your skin is hydrated and refreshed and dewy and glowy with Osea's Andaria Algae Body Oil. And their Total Body Glow Trio Kit. So the kit includes the body oil, a moisturizing body scrub, and a plant-based body brush. Um, it sweeps away dense dead skin cells, then hydrates for incredibly soft, glowy skin all summer long. Find your new skincare and body care favorites at oseamalibu.com. Get a special discount just for our listeners. 10% off your first order site-wide with promo code TOAST. You'll get free samples with every order, and orders over $50 get free shipping. You're going to want to... Get it all. So go to OSEAMalibu.com, promo code TOAST. OSEA is spelled O-S-E-A, Malibu.com. That promo code is TOAST for 10% off your first order. And don't forget, you'll get free samples with every order over $50. You also get free shipping. Great. Thank you. It's a pleasure doing business with you. Happy Friday, it's everyone. It's a Friday, so you can sing your song. It's a pleasure. Oh, that's also on Toast Tunes. I feel like every time we mention Toast Tunes, we don't think of that song. Yeah, we need to do a list, and then we need to book studio time. 100%. Yeah, I'm starting to think about, like, when my first trip back to New York will be, mm. like, and all the things that I need to do while I'm there, and I think that's when we should record Toast Tunes. Okay, I mean, the thing is, it's not even about booking studio time, and I just keep saying this in the hopes that the right person with the right set of skills will reach out. Like, if you are a music producer, like, you produce original tracks, you don't have to be hella experienced. Like, we need someone to actually, before we get in the studio, like, we need to have someone create the song, like, the background to what we're singing. Okay. Someone do it. Please, someone reach out. Like, we need your help. We do. Our first story is a very sad turn of events. Um, Anne Heche is, quote, not expected to survive her car crash. The actress's rep told Page Six Thursday night that she suffered a severe anoxic brain injury due to the accident and remains in a coma at the Grossman Burn Center at West Hills Hospital and Medical Center in California. Quote, is lo- it has long been her cho- choice to donate her organs, and she is being kept on life support to determine if, the- if any are viable. Mm-hmm. Her rep thanked uh, her fans for their kind wishes and prayers, as well as the dedicated staff and the wonderful nurses who have cared for her since the wreck. You know what? Like, I know we've been talking about this all week, but I don't know why this really surprised me. I wasn't expecting, like, I felt like uh, the details we knew up until this point were like it was serious, but like it wasn't fatal. Yeah. Um, and when I saw, I got a people notification. It was like not expected to survive. I was like, oh, I don't know why. I was like completely shocked. No, I was completely shocked too because that's not uh, how it seemed earlier this week. And, you know, maybe they just were taking their time to share the news as they saw fit. And also, as we like discussed the other day, she was in a coma. It was unclear if it was right. medically induced, but it was not. And so this is just a really, really sad tragic turn of events right like to know what's coming but um if you wanted to look at the positive you know as an organ donor hopefully she'll be able to make a positive impact definitely wishing her family really truly the best yeah Okay, our next story, some drama. Jay Cutler is responding to Kristen Cavallari calling their marriage toxic. So Jay Cutler went on Sophia with an F and I'm in Which was just interesting timing, seeing as how Kristen Cavallari was just on Call Her Daddy. I'm in the middle of the Sophia with an F episode, <clears throat> and I'm obsessed. The report, I have to say, like, the I also is ship. so good. And I, I ship. ship. I that would be ship. a really good couple. I feel like, I think Sophia is single, right? I think she posted that. It's never really clear. Clear, right, I yeah. Think, I mean, I think that's extremely intentional since, like, the last time the public knew about her relationship, they tore it to shreds. 
Right, but also I think she's also like just like that carefree girly. Like I feel like when I talk to her, I'm like, are you single? And she answers me. I never know what she says, you know? Yeah, yeah. I feel that. So it's it's possible is what you're saying. Yeah, and Jay Cutler's hot. Yeah, no, and the rapport was so funny and cute. I didn't watch. I just saw clips on Instagram. But like wh- what I was focusing on, and I think what a lot of people were focusing on was like the timing of her of inviting course, him. Of course, of course. It was like, like so funny. It's, Because the Call Her Daddy saga is a saga that never ends, at least in my mind. Like, I feel like there's so much tension and it's so unresolved. Yeah, of course. I mean, I would love to know how this came about. Like, Kristen took her story to Call Her Daddy and, like, shared and talked about Jay a little bit and, like, called the relationship really toxic and there was tons of red flags and the reason why they broke up their engagement before they even got married was the same reason they eventually got divorced. Like, you know, people don't change. Um, Right. And I just would love to know if Jay reached out to Sophia or Sophia reached out to Jay. Whose idea was this? It's fucking hysterical. Right. Because also, so um, Kristen, it's not like she was on like a press tour. Like Audrina, who was on Call Her Daddy recently, is promoting her book. Well, I think Kristen's also promoting her podcast, her new podcast. Right, right, I guess. Yeah. But what I found interesting, and the only clip I saw from the Sophia interview, which was just a really good point, is like Sophia, you know, heard what Kristen Cavallari had said about Jay Cutler. And every time she, you know, kind of dragged him or called him toxic, she would say right before that, you know, he's the father of my children, so I'm not going to go there, but he's toxic. But here I go. Yeah. Right, right. Which I thought was really funny. Um, I don't have a particular stake in the uh, Jay Cutler, Kristen Cavallari divorce. Like, I don't care, really. Um, I'm just interested in the podcast drama of it all. And, you know, I think a press moment for podcasts is a win for podcasts everywhere. Yeah. And this is just like another layer of the Alex Sophia thing, which we devoured when it came out. And honestly, I'm like still obsessed with. Yes. I also am obsessed with Jay and Kristen. And it says like their dissolution of their relationship actually makes me sad. They were on Very Cavallari together and he talks about his experience filming the show and how he really didn't want to be there. But Kristen like was a football wife for so many years that now it was like her time to shine. And so he wasn't going to say like, no, I can't. But you could sense that he doesn't want to be there. But honestly, like it came off so funny. I thought that people really liked him on the show because he was so unbothered. Mm -hmm. But and you could see then like, you know, we always talk about this. I just feel like sometimes when you see a relationship on a show and like it looks like there's something wrong it's like well the fact that they're showing that to us kind of shows that it's healthy you know that's true and that's sort of how I felt about them like they were very like honest about their dynamic um but clearly it was just a little too real and I mean yeah and I was like a big fan of them when they were together I thought they were like a really well-matched couple but now with the dissolution and like the divorce I find myself caring less because like I just don't care Yeah, but they do have three kids and they'll always actually be in each other's lives. But it's also funny, like the stuff with Madison LaCroix, lest we not forget. And because Kristen was like hanging out with Austin. So Jay. The world is so small. But then like Madison, she posted those text messages and that was not the the move. Right. Because Kristen. The world is tiny. Kristen and Jay that posted together like United. Right, which was like kind of fucked up to Madison when he was like playing with Madison, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, but it's just, it never ends. No, it never ends and everyone is connected. I keep forgetting like, I totally forgot about the Madison LaCroix thing, first of all, that was so long ago. And you just forget how like literally everyone who's famous is connected in some weird way. Yes, and so I don't know what Jay's relationship status is currently. Maybe if I keep listening, I'll find out. I feel like he's always dating and being spotted with people, but I would love to see him spotted with Sophia with an F. No, no, I need them to date. Like I, (laughs) I'm putting like the level of pressure I put on Paige and Craig on Jay. I'm officially transferring. I feel like they're good. Paige and Craig, like I feel good. They're secure. They're stable. I'm officially releasing them of my handcuffs and those handcuffs are on Jay and Sophia now. They don't need like that positive energy and encouragement and like karmic positivity, but those two do. Yeah. Yeah. And I just feel like it's like a perfect match. One, because like he's so hot and rich. She is like so hot and funny. And like she does come from Barstool Sports and like Barstool Sports like turned on her. But if she ends up with Jake Cutler, like I think he's like a really good football player. Was, yeah. Former football player. Then it's like she comes out on top of like the whole sports thing, you know? That's very true. I just love it. But as stated in the podcast, she really doesn't care about sports, which also makes it better. And she talks about like, 
the I think the episode's called like clout chasing because she's like so many girls who listen to the podcast like want to land an athlete. What do they do? How? But she, she, was, she was saying that she wouldn't date an athlete. Maybe she was just like playing hard to get. No, it was a really good strategy. I think that there's something there. I would not be surprised like if they were spotted out. I need a page six moment like like a dinner at Katsuya something. I don't know. Yeah. And she was in Nashville. So I don't know if she like went explicitly for this interview and who oh. reached out to who. Or she was staying at his house. Or she was staying at his house. Also, I believe she was on his podcast. Maybe, okay, like maybe this is how it happened. She was staying at his house and the Kristen, <laughs> the Kristen Cavallari oh, interview they, came out. I think they were dating first. Yeah, and he was like really upset. He's like, babe, I hate that she's calling me toxic. Like I feel so helpless. I need a platform. What do I do? And she was like, babe, like, and they're in bed the whole time naked, by the way. <laughs> and she's like, babe, like you could come on my podcast. No one obviously will know we're dating. It will just be like a typical interview. And then the internet will ship us, but we're already shipped and we come out on top, babe. What about this? Take it back one step further. We thought that like Jay went on Sophia because Kristen went on Call Her Daddy. But but maybe they've been dating for so long. And like Kristen knew that that's Jay's new girl. But- and so she was like, I'll go on Call Her Daddy. But I see that. But my only thing is, wasn't Jay responding to like some of this stuff Kristen said on Call Her Daddy? Yeah. Also, if making this you is think all it true, had to happen afterwards. If this like back and forth is all true, then like Jay and Kristen are just still hung up on each other. Hundred <laughs> percent. It's like not normal to be talking about your ex like this far out. Yeah, and it's like every time one of them like, okay, I'm with Austin, so I'll be with Madison. Okay, I'm with Alex. They, they're I'll one of each other. Yeah. 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 Oh my God, totally. I'm with Claudia. I'm with Jackie. Totally. Yeah. That's exactly. And you guys know, like I have, uh, oh, actually I forgot to update everyone <laughs> about my personal beef with Kristen Cavallari that I'm sure she doesn't even know about. Um, I was reached out to by a member of her team apologizing. You know, they said it was one girl's fault and that girl doesn't work here anymore, which is just hella convenient that it happened to be one girl's fault and that one girl doesn't work there anymore but they were really nice about it i'm officially over it even though i would love an apology from kristen herself i'm done i'm over it yeah good they ha- i just don't like people who take advantage of small bits oh my god they handled them they they made it right they made it right and they reached out and they didn't have to yeah no it was nice it was nice i'm i'm over it <laughs> not at all no i am i am okay well hopefully there's something to keep you posted about this story and these two Hundred percent. Just everyone say a prayer. So far, I have two new ship enterprises from today's episode. Okay, who's the next Taylor one? Taylor and T- and Tom Schwartz. Oh, right, right. I thought you were. That was like a segue into the next story. No, our next story is another ship that's out to sea that seems to be fine, even though everybody's coming for it. Pirates are surrounding. Melissa and Joe Gorga address their devastating decision to skip Teresa Judice's wedding. So Melissa and Joe are addressing the elephant in the room on this week's episode of Melissa Gorga on Display podcast. You guys, every story is podcast news. Like, where do people Wait. share their truths if not on podcasts? Okay, I want to talk about this, but I wanted to say one thing. You know that Teresa also just announced a podcast called Namaste on the same network as Melissa's? I saw that she announced a podcast, didn't know it was called Namaste, and didn't put together that it, they're on the same network. It is a big I, network, though. Yeah, it's podcast one. It's huge. It's like one of the OG networks. But um, I also want to say, I have done Melissa Gorga's podcast. She has a real knack for it. And as far as I know, as someone who's like, you know obsessed with like stalking and just knowing everything about everyone her podcast is extremely successful yeah I'm sure it is she's great for it and I don't think of course I'm comparing like what Teresa's is going to be I don't think Teresa has the capacity podcasting is very difficult people think it's so easy like oh I'm so funny me and my friends we hang out like we should have a podcast no it's actually extremely difficult I agree I wouldn't say that that's you know Teresa's straight what I would choose for her but give it Mm -hmm. a shot go girl yeah Anyways, Melissa and Joe went on Melissa's podcast to talk about the laundry list of reasons they didn't attend the wedding. Quote, I will let all my listeners know this. Obviously, there was something that went down at the season 13 finale of filming The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Those exact details I obviously cannot say today. Anything that we have filmed is something that I am not able to talk about. She then confirmed that the full entire story leading to tension amongst the family is not public knowledge at this time, but drips and drabs of it have surfaced, she said. Quote, I'm not going to sit here and say that there wasn't drama, that it wasn't crazy. Yes, there was a little aggression from certain 
some people that could have been a little scary. She noted there was plenty of reason it'd be strange for the pair to attend the wedding thereafter. Joe said it was so, so hard for him to not attend Teresa's wedding, especially since he's his only... He, she's his only close family that's still alive. He said, quote, to me, it was devastating. It really was. It was one of the hardest days of my life. It was bad. But listen, let's go back to the reunion. She did this, you know, this was all on her. This is what she really wanted. She didn't want Melissa in the wedding. She didn't want any of my children in the wedding. She barely wanted me. Jeez. Well, um, this is like the craziest saga of events. And I feel really sad that the families can't work it out. Yeah, I agree. I'm glad that they like took the time to explain to everyone. Because I think a lot of people are like, yes, we understand that Teresa's, a, you know, a hard, tough cookie, but it's family and it's a wedding. And why weren't you there? So I, I'm glad that they shared this. And I can only imagine like really what they went through and what the season has to hold and has in store for us to see. And I totally respect their decision. And I imagine it's extremely difficult. And this is not something that they did like capriciously. This has been now 13 years of all of this drama and they've, they put their foot down. I get it. No, and I have respect for it. I made the atrocious mistake of going on Twitter to see what people's thoughts are. Um, and I cannot believe how many toxic Teresa stands exist. It's so mind-blowing to me that you could come to the conclusion after watching this show that Teresa has somehow been wronged. Yeah, no, Twitter's a great place to go if you want to hear, like, the worst takes of all time, especially as it relates to housewives. And then sometimes I go to Twitter and, like, I agree with what everyone's saying. And I'm like, so I'm wrong rethink recalibrate yeah no recalibrate it's so and by the way I totally support Melissa I love the decision that she made I think she really did her mo her best I know a lot of the drama that people are like guessing is is what happened is about Melissa cheating on Joe and Daily Mail claims to know the guy everyone knows the guy um and I just hate that we don't know and we're not going to know for so long like what the actual issue is yeah was but I do think that this sort of thing will keep people interested till the season premieres. Like it's not something we're just going to forget. And then by the time the premieres will be like, we're over it because no. this is a big deal. So I'm happy for the ratings. Uh, me too. No, Jersey, Jersey stays winning. Yeah. Um, before you dive into the next story, can I just tell you about Next Evo Naturals? You can. I've been waiting to hear about it. If you've ever wondered whether your CBD was working, that means it probably wasn't. Next Evo Naturals developed SmartSorb technology clinically proven to help your body absorb CBD four times better than regular CBD oil because oil just doesn't mix with your water-based body. It works faster too when you feel stress coming on. You won't waste time wondering, is it working? I'm a CBD girly. I like taking CBD in a bunch of different methods, a bunch of different mediums. And why I like Next Evo CBD is because their all natural products are backed by more scientific studies than any other CBD brand. They're vegan, GMO free, gluten free, THC free capsules, and their gummies are derived from 100% US grown hemp. So if you've been wanting to try CBD or you're not happy with your current CBD company, try the Next Evo Naturals capsules, gummies, mints, and topical creams that are clinically proven to be better absorbed by your body. Get 25% off your next order of $40 or more at nextevo.com, promo code TOAST, that's 25% off N E. X-T-E-V-O dot com promo code toast. Great. Okay, our next story is some wonderful deserving news. Kenan Thompson has been honored with the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. One of SNL's favorite funny men is get finally getting the recognition he deserves. Comedian and actor Kenan Thompson hit a major career milestone this week by being honored with the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The actor showed up in style for his big moment, decked out in all Navy suit as he was joined by his two daughters for the career making night. His former co-star Leslie Jones hyped him up as she eagerly recorded the star's unveiling, making sure she got a close-up of Keenan's shiny new accomplishment and later giving a speech in his honor. In addition, Josh Server, his former co-star uh, from Nickelodeon sketch series All That, also gave a speech to honor his friend. And his star is right next to Lorne Michaels' star. Oh, wow. I'm sad Kel wasn't there. I feel like That's he should have been. That's true. Um, and I always find it really interesting what celebrities have who who celebrities choose other celebrities to like speak at their Hollywood Walk of Fame moment um I love that Leslie Jones was there I watched the video of him unveiling his star and like his daughters like couldn't have cared less and Leslie Jones was like losing her mind it was so funny and so cute and so real um and I'm just surprised he didn't have one already and then you know it makes me sit back and think about Kenan Thompson especially now I'm watching um I mean not watching I'm reading Jeanette McCurdy's book like Kenan Thompson is low-key a child actor 
Right, but oh, I'm sorry. He was in heavyweights. He's not low key. He was like literally ten in that movie. But find you like a more stable, consistent guy. And you know, on more than one occasion, I've like had an Uber driver who like likes to tell me about famous people they've driven, and I've gotten like more than once someone who's driven Keenan Thompson on Saturday to Saturday Night Live. Like he's always going back and forth from his apartment. He doesn't have a chauffeur. He's an Uber regular guy, and. Um, they say he's so nice, so funny, so down to earth. Um, and that's just like surprising, obviously, for someone so famous, but also someone who's really been a star since they were like 10. And he never went through like a weird period. No, he didn't. He's now been on SNL for 20 seasons. He's the longest running cast member. And it's just crazy to think about. Also, in this article, I saw that he's hosting the Emmys, which I don't think I knew. And I saw this week that the Emmys are actually going back to cable. No, that was the Golden One of them. Golden Globes are done. No, but one of them's coming back. They were done, but they're coming back to the oh. TV. I think it might be the Golden Globes. Anyways, well, he's hosting I feel the like Emmys. Kenan Thompson is always getting shafted. Like NBC gave him a sitcom. It was canceled. Oh, I wonder why. Maybe because I never saw a commercial for it. Oh, Kenan Thompson is hosting the Emmys. Who knew? Because they don't promote it. Like right. he's always like doing the most and getting the least. That's genuinely how I feel. No, it's so true. Whenever someone makes hosting news, especially like for the Emmys, it would usually be it's a huge. story. I didn't see it. He'll do a great job. He's hilarious. He for so long has held SNL together by a thread. He literally puts the whole show on his back, him and Kate McKinnon. Now she's gone. So um, I hope he makes a lot of money because he works extremely hard. Yeah, he and does. I think it's really nice that he got the honor of being next to Lauren. Yeah. Because there are so many people who would probably attribute their whole lives to Lauren. Tina Fey, Jimmy Fallon, Chris Rock, like so many people. Adam Sandler. Yeah. No, it's it's a great honor and he he's so deserving. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Are you ready for our fifth and final story? The final story. It's a final story. What's it about? Jack it, tell us. Please. It's about and Six Flags. And that's a magic flags. number. Six Flags? Yes, what about Six it? Six Flags is making news. The CEO is speaking to the press about this revamp for Six Flags because they have become, quote, a cheap daycare center for teenagers. Ooh. Yeah, no, he's like not holding back, but I kind of love this for him. Six Flags revealed it has shed nearly 2 million customers during the past year, a drop that came partly because of an initiative to weed out rowdy teenagers, according to the company's CEO. The Texas-based theme park shares tumbled to 18% on Thursday after it disclosed that its attendance at its 27 parks was down 22% from a year ago. The drop came partly because Six Flags has been steadily hiking ticket prices after offering too many discounts this year. Quote, so we only got the discounter or we became a cheap daycare center for teenagers. It was a cheap daycare center for teenagers during breaks and the summers. In response, Six Flags has been hiking prices to reduce the numbers of rowdy teenagers running around. Also, in the past, the rowdiness has turned violent with fights mm. breaking out at different theme parks during Fright Night. So now they're elevating their ticket prices to focus on elevating the guest experience and to learn like more families. But the ticket yeah. price still isn't that. It's $63 compared to $51 last year. But for reference, like SeaWorld, a ticket is $116. Wow. Who would pay $116 to mock and captured animals? Someone, a lot of someone's would. So they're they're trying to, I don't know, I guess like rebrand and just not become a place where teens hang out and fight. No, let me say something. Like I, I understand the liability of it because if teenagers are like fighting and creating drama, but I do think this is like an extremely um, risky idea because first of all, sounds like they're isolating like their biggest demographic of customers. Like teenagers. kids- Teenagers, like well, no, who, kids and teenagers are different. Like for kids and families. No, I'm talking about teenagers. Yeah. So you're isolating and like excluding your biggest core demographic, even though they do pose an issue. Like that's still a big group of people who are your customers. But and two, like rowdy, what else are you doing to elevate? Because Six Flags in a world of like the Disneylands and all the Dolly World, like all these other Harry Potter world. 
Six Flags is low-key irrelevant and like kind of janky and like they have to be doing other things if they actually want to compete like cleaning up the parks new rides new this I feel like for a while they were like top top tier of amusement parks and now they're like irrelevant uglies gullible big face witches well I feel like that's what they're trying to counter but I also think that their biggest demographic is families and maybe having rowdy teenagers is keeping families out they're like we don't want to be in this environment with our kids so it actually will lure in more customers and they're losing customers but they're raising the ticket prices so maybe at the end of the day they'll make the same amount of money the only thing is like for a teenager to like go and like get in trouble I mean aside from fighting and violence never condone it ever but like rowdy teenagers going and spending their time at six flags like it's kind of cute like and it's, no it's like kind of and, loser and it's so like, how much so, trouble could they get in right and so it's not like I don't think they sell alcohol like okay so that's right. where they're going like it, I worry to think about where those teens will go instead maybe they should go home to their parents and find and mow the love. lawn no like kids need kids need like you know routines and Structure. and when they're left to their own devices they're starting fights at six flags yeah I don't think that they're going to go home, though. I just, I hope they don't get into some real trouble. No, like, does this elevate, like, where they go to next? No, I know. Like, we're, they're literally displacing the teenagers. Yeah, and the teenagers need help, and they need places to go to have, like, g- good fun, you know, instead of turning to to bad things. I will say, in defense of the teenagers, at that age, there aren't, like, a ton of options for, like, fun, cool places to hang out because you're stuck between, like, not being 21 and then not wanting to hang out at, like, a Chuck E. Cheese or a roller rink. Um, so like there's really not, that's why you're always like hanging out in someone's basement, but there's not a lot of options for like 16, 17 year olds who know how to drive, who have like access, they have jobs, they have money, like they can go, but like, where do they go? Yeah. Where did you guys hang out as 16 year olds? For me, like I was always at Serafina. Yeah. We hung out at Pinkberry. Yeah. Where do the kids hang out today? And where did you guys hang out? I think it depends where you're from. Yeah. Where you live. But it's tough out there for the teens. No, for sure. Like, I sympathize with, like, not having, like, a a nice, fun, clean place to but organize. it's like, if you find somewhere to go, say it's your local bowling alley, anywhere, you better act right. You better treat it with respect. You better not fight. You better pick up after yourself. Otherwise, you're giving teens around the world a bad name. Just like these kids at Six Flags. You ruined it for everyone. Yeah, congratulations. You played yourself. You got It's the one you got. That was an interesting biz news segment. Thank you so much for bringing that to my when attention. I, I, I had forgotten about that brand. When I saw the headline, I found it to be interesting. The CEO is just like kicking out the teens. He's literally like, who's the villain from that movie who like hates kids? Which movie? I don't know. But like, it's like a, come on, help. Like that guy. Oh, speaking of movies, we need to talk about like the greatest debate ever sparked yesterday was Elle Woods valedictorian. It's not even a debate. I went back and watched the whole clip. She's not the valedictorian. There's no debate. Thank you. She's not. I thought you were going to like go toe to toe with me again today. No, they literally (laughs) said, please welcome the class elected speaker, Elle Woods. If she was valedictorian, please welcome the valedictorian, Elle Woods. She's a motherfucking class elected speaker, which is a huge honor. I'm sure you have to have good grades, but you're not the motherfucking valedictorian. I was wrong. There's no debate. Okay, great. But I do want to say, apparently in the musical, like in the song, she's the valedictorian. I don't care. That's not what we... we obviously, we're not referring no. to the musical. No, and that's not the original. Also, that's a plot hole because if you know... Elle, I, Elle Woods, I love forever. Like, she is everything to me. But she's not valedictorian material. That's not why we love Elle. Like, she is everything else. But you can't be Elle and be fabulous and be street smart and get off work and know all this stuff and have the highest grades at Harvard Law School. It's just not how it works in life. No, that's fair. She got a 179 on the LSAT. Like, there are people who got a perfect score. Uh, 179 is actually not even a score you can literally get it's like impossible like based on how those tests are scored yeah 179 she's so iconic because nobody will ever say the number 179 normally ever again because if i oh claudia what street are you on 179th (laughs) claudia how much how many munchkins did you eat from dunkin donuts 179 claudia how much did you weigh (laughs) 179 (laughs) Um, okay, so that's our show. I have to head to West Hampton now because oh I have a show gosh. today. Oh have the so, greatest time. Are you going to make you. a uh, Hamptons weekend of it? No, because I would like to relax at home 
for a little while and then I'm leaving to see you. So I'll get in, you know, a few more sleeps in my bed and then I'll see you. So Monday's episode, everyone have a good weekend. Next week, Tuesday through Friday, Jackson Claude. Flamingos. Camera, By the flamingos. way, our new episode of Breaking Bread, our final episode ever is on Spotify right now. And we do address what happened to the flamingos. People are still commenting, asking. So we talk about it in the episode of Breaking Bread. It's actually like major tea and it's mm-hmm. really crazy. But um, head over there if you want to hear what happened. So Tuesday through Friday, camera, video, YouTube, and podcast episodes, Jackie and Claudia together. And then Monday's up in the air. It might be podcast only, or it might be a video that we record Sunday night. Let's see where the weekend takes us. Let's see where the weekend takes us. So you guys, it's been an amazing week. Thank you for keeping, you know, being patient with us with all of the remote studio tings. I feel like we've gotten into a good place. Yesterday, I wanted to pull my hair out. I made the dumbest mistake when I was exporting our video that delayed me about an hour. And I just like literally wanted to die. Like I wanted to be dead, buried in the ground, six feet under. But you have to you have to make those mistakes in order to know, like moving forward, not to make them. It's You have to learn the hard way. So we're getting better. I'm telling you, we're going to get to a place where the videos will be up a lot sooner. But thank you for your patience. I hope you guys have an amazing day. And thank you so much for listening to the Morning Toast and Millennium Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as podcasts anywhere podcasts can be found. So it's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places. So wherever you listen to podcasts, find us, the Morning Toast, and leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. Hope you guys have an amazing weekend. Stay safe. Head to girlwithnojob.com slash tour um, if you're not ugly. And I love Love you. Bye. Bye.